There are some major misconceptions when it comes to extreme heat and horses. And what I mean by extreme heat is hot ambient temperatures plus relative humidity. I've had a lot of people comment on other videos uh, on other apps about, well, I live in the Southwest and this, that, and the other. And I understand that you don't have the factor most of the time of relative humidity. And there are three major misconceptions that a lot of people really mess up and can honestly harm their horses. And the bad thing is, is there are people in place of authority, either within a community or within industries, that perpetuate these misconceptions. So let's talk about those major misconceptions and a little bit about horse anatomy today. So let's talk a little bit about how horses deal with heat. I mean, it's not really that complicated, but they don't really deal with heat the way humans do. In fact, they're three to ten times more likely to suffer from some heat-related illness than people, and it all has to do with their anatomy. For one, horses have large muscle groups, and when large muscle groups are at work, well, they generate heat. Not only that, but they have larger organs, which calls for a higher core temperature. Also, the way horses dissipate heat really isn't much different than humans. They get rid of some through the air, exhaling through their lungs, and then the rest is through the bloodstream at the surface of the skin, with sweating and evaporation. Except when we throw relative humidity into the mix and that sweat isn't evaporating like it should or in a timely manner, then that form of cooling can just get shut down. Myth number one, don't let a hot horse drink water. And I have no idea where this comes from, but it is something that I have heard numerous times from different people, people, again, that I had a lot of respect for within the industry. And there is honestly nothing to it. Your horse can drink plenty of water when it's cold. In fact, it has a cooling effect as the water in the stomach and the actual ambient temperature of the stomach equalize. Horses can hold between two and four gallons of water in their stomach before it becomes distended. Them drinking water while they're hot is not going to cause them to distend their stomach and colic. In fact, giving them water during exercise, even moderate exercise, is highly recommended when the weather is warm. Really, when the weather is any temperature, allow your horse to drink. Give it water breaks during exercise. It's a huge misconception, and you're probably dehydrating your horse if you're not. Another mis misconception comes from garden hosing your horse off after exercise. It only takes 17 minutes of moderate exercise for a horse to overheat. And again, they're 3 to 10 times more likely to overheat than you are during moderate exercise. I don't know where the myth comes from, but a perfectly healthy human would love a nice hose off on a hot day. We all did it as kids. We all jump into a cold pool or a cool pool on a hot summer day. The same applies to your horse. There's no research that shows any ill effect comes from hosing off your horse on a hot day. I've heard everything from they can colic to they can have a heart attack to they can uh, develop skin conditions because you're robbing their skin of uh, essential oils that they need the skin condition thing is asinine. Um, if you have oily hair and you just rinse it with water and dry it off, you still have oily hair. Um, if you shampoo your horse too much, you can rob that horse of natural oils, but we're not talking about shampooing here. We're talking about preventing heat stress and heat exhaustion in your horse, any heat-related illness. Hose them horses off after even moderate exercise. The New York Gaming Commission that controls the racetracks there, their vets recommend buckets of ice water and sponges, and they sponge those racehorses down with ice water. They're not dropping at the racetrack of heart attacks. Okay, let me rephrase that. They're not dropping from heart attacks at the racetrack from ice water. Yeah, we'll go with that. 
And number three, another huge misconception, and I am guilty of this one myself for years until I looked at the research, and that is giving an electrolyte supplement over giving extra salt. Horses in their sweat will lose more sodium chloride and potassium than they will anything. They're not losing iron and magnesium and things like that. If they are, it's in very small amounts. What they need replenished is sodium. That's it. Give them salt. What I have started doing is I hang a one of those salt licks on a rope near my water trough. So it encourages them to drink plus replaces the salt that they are losing. Electrolyte supplement is intended for horses who are at a normal dose of salt. And horses will lose nearly one ounce of salt. That's one ounce of pure salt in a day, just normally. So you throw extreme heat and sweat on top of that, they need that salt replaced. Trust me there. So now let's talk about a few things you can do to prevent heat-related illness and your horses in cases of extreme heat. Again, especially with uh, relative humidity that is high. Salt intake. Like we just discussed, hang one of those Himalayan salt rocks near your water troughs. Put a white salt brick near your water trough. Something that they're going to increase their salt intake, plus it's going to encourage them to drink too, and it's going to help keep them hydrated. So win-win there. So speaking of those water troughs, as the water temperature increases, algae and things like that are going to grow a lot easier. Plus, with the temperature increasing of that water, horses may not be quite as uh, keen on wanting to drink that bathtub water that you're presenting them when it's 100 degrees outside. Some horses seem to not mind it. Other horses seem to prefer something cooler. Do not put ice in your water. Horses don't want things floating around in their water. But, with that said, garden hose cool water around 70 degrees or so, 65 to 70, is what's preferred. In fact, it's going to have a cooling effect on them, and it's probably going to be a little bit more appetizing. Now, there is some misconception out there about that, and that is... Cold water going into the horse and digestion, there's nothing to that either. There's also people who like to quote a study that says ambient water is more appetizing to a horse than cool water. Well, that study had no control, and the ambient water that they were using was between 75 and 80 degrees, and what they called cool water was literal ice water with ice chunks in it. So that's a study that we can really just kind of throw out the window. Regardless, do what's best for your horses. Keep an eye on what their water intake is these days. And if you got any questions, drop them in the comments. Got merch over in the merch store. Link down there too. You can go find me on the clock app. All my shorts are over there. And yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.